Did the gong. That's pretty cool. That just happened. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I saw That's that. better than the gong. See, Victor, Victor actually got a gong for that purpose. Well, not actually not. But the thing is, you actually do it with a purpose. So it's actually, this is like a thing. If you're making yeah. videos, it helps you identify the start to sync up the videos. But actually, it's kind of, it's, we, we see people doing that and Victor just like got a gong for that purpose randomly. What, what he's saying is that we, when, for those of you that, if you're recording sound separately and you've got a couple of cameras like we have here, if you, at the beginning of your, your tape, you clap. That way, when you get into the editing, you can sync up the sound with that one clap. It's a lot easier for you to sync it all up. And so then you've got two video lines and you've got one sound line all linked up together and then you can edit. I told you he's good. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about we're going to keep this to five minutes because we're running okay. out of time. They've got guns pointed at us by, by the door. They're kicking us out. So we're going to be talking about why commercial video production companies should take YouTube seriously. Coming soon. He's really dancing this time. He's going, he's going crazy. He's going I thought they were going to shoot him. I thought they were going to yeah. shoot him. It's scary here. Yeah, they, they're very strict with the time here. The security people, they don't mess around. So we're okay. talking about this. You made you made your series and everything, and you've had revelations about this. But at the same time, there is a, there is a business model which doesn't really incorporate the idea of online video that that where the whole commercial video production goes on. But your view is people should be taking online video more seriously, or what is your view on this? Most definitely, the what we were talking about the other night when I rocked into town, we went and um, I went and got drunk, and he wa he watched me get drunk and start talking about this yeah. stuff. Look. I won't name the channel, no. but I was uh, I, I do know the stats for this one particular channel. They're a huge worldwide brand, okay? Yeah. And they have uh, they have stats which show that their average viewer mm. watches for half an hour once a week. Mm. Now, I would suggest that your average viewer watches for longer. The Hiko the Tokyo Tonight. Yeah probably watches you for longer. Yeah. Now, okay, they also have a very vague understanding of how many people are actually watching because they're using the old rating system. The Nielsen system. Now, in actual fact, mm. these big global media giants that we all think are just so huge they can't be touched, I, I, they, they have to be very careful. They have to start looking online or else they're going to go the way of Kodak or the dinosaurs. Blockbuster. Yeah, there you go, right there. Netflix walked in and said, hey, let's do a deal, and they laughed them out of the office, and two years later... There you go. Well, that can happen. So, uh, the, the reason I'm, I'm saying this is because when you look at YouTube today, yeah. the biggest YouTube guys are much, much bigger. They have much, much more viewers. They have much better details on the demographics of those the, the viewers than the actual media giants, these Goliaths. And we're talking about one or two guys. Yeah, uh, sometimes cats. Sometimes cats. <laughs> but the, the, biggest, the biggest YouTube channel in the world, he plays video games, doesn't he? And Judy people Pye. just watch his screen, him, him playing video games and commentating on it. Yeah. Now, he's much bigger than all of these other channels. And now, the channels, if you talk about the channels, they're these guys here, yeah. and they're this small, really, but we look at them as being huge multinational Audiences. conglomerates yeah. and then you've got the social media guys like Facebook and Google and they're obviously quite big and so on and you go oh yeah well you know if they you use social media you can mm. you know get big and all that and then you've got the YouTube guys they're even bigger yeah you know they've got huge amounts Con considering it's only one person the amount of, amount of clout they have mm. so I don't think that these channels can do anything but take notice of, of what's going on on YouTube but YouTube obviously and understandably scares, I think, commercial people still. Yeah. One, they don't know how to extract money from it. And even Google's still trying to figure out how to extract money from, translate the views um, that it has. And one way that they're trying to increase the value of those views is by having these awesome analytics, which of course yeah. we can get off them. But at the same time, I think it's also, the fact is when you put it on TV, sure, you don't know who's watching or whatever, but at the same time, they can't leave 
stupid comments to it. You can't have yeah. trolls. You can't have down thumbs or whatever. You're taking a bit of a risk going online. And you know, YouTube, the YouTube culture of used course. to be the 4chan culture. Of course. of course you're taking a risk. Of course you are. But, but hold on, hold on. This is, this is what TV used to be. Yeah. TV used to be... Um, the ask the questions. You, you put, put good content on yeah. and the advertisers, if you've got lots of viewers, yeah. if you were anywhere but New Zealand, which only had two, two TV channels, if you were anywhere else <laughs> out in the Both world, the there were lots of different channels. <laughs> right. And so I love the channels you, we travel. <laughs> you had to yeah, yeah, it was great, wasn't it? You go, oh my god, these guys the have got five channels. Five channels in Australia. They're, they're, they're a big country in Australia. They've got five channels. But the, the way that you paid to yeah. put those TV programs on TV was that you put on good content. Yeah. Therefore, you attracted viewers. Therefore, the advertiser would pay for the spot there because they knew people would be watching. Yeah. Now, these days, the channels have kind of forgotten that. Now, the, be aware, this is my personal opinion. I... I Arms. I don't the arms. arms. Um, and so that's why I think YouTube is is a they do have to start thinking about that. And yes, it will be a risk for them because mm. the onus is on them then to produce stuff which we want to watch, the viewer wants to watch. But to me the big difference between what you do and what I do, well, the truth is I'm not trying to live off it, but you take someone like PDR Sun, who I think is awesome and is a guy trying seriously to make a living off YouTube. Um, when you do a documentary it's paid for before it's broadcast, pretty much, right? Yeah. There isn't really a, an issue of recovering money later on. The, the advertising and everything is pretty much all packaged up before it's broadcast, right? Generally, the way they do it now, they sell the advertising, then they make the TV show. Yeah, yeah, and this product, and you can see there's more placement of products and stuff like that to, to make it a safer bit for everybody yes. for a production. It's all about safety. But YouTube is all about, you know, someone like PDR, if, 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 if I don't know, some some... Naked photos would probably help him. So I'm trying to think of you know, so, something happened to suddenly make him extremely uncool and people stop watching. You know, the moment those views stop, those views translate directly into what he makes and that's his livelihood gone. So he's on an onus to keep being funny. That's right. Uh, which is tough, but he's doing it. But I don't know. So again, from a commercial model to switch to a model where you've got such safety at the moment, can they, can they do it? Well, you, you look at the way that um, the, the big movie studios in Hollywood make yeah. their movies these days you know the creative people don't make the don't come up with the ideas now it's the number it's yeah. the numbers guys it's the committee guys yeah and that's why i think it would be wonderful if youtube is the future or the likes of youtube is the future of tv because at least we're going to get stuff which people have put their creative juices into it yeah and they've made it specifically because they want somebody to find it interesting and to watch it not mm. oh, i've got to get an advertiser to pay for it yeah quite frankly that's we may as well all go outside and <laughs> walk on the grass or something yeah which is probably what we should do anyway anyway well, that's good for discipline it's good for you know in fact we have to make good quality to survive for the people who want to survive by it and there's an increasing number of people doing it so okay so this is cool uh we want to get more episodes in so hang around um the next episode i can't read my own handwriting so i guess it's going to be a surprise but it's going to be on the same time next week with ace man we're going to be talking more about commercial production all that sort of stuff so hang around and see us next week for more of ace producer versus geek youtuber peace what is the next one i can't even read my own handwriting uh advice so kid for, for you new youtubers so